the worst heat wave in Europe, was back in 2003. That year, a staggering 70,000 people across Europe lost their lives due to the heat. Last year's heat wave was almost as devastating, with recent studies showing over 60,000 deaths due to heat-related illnesses. With this year being even hotter, who knows how high that number might go next year. Yet, many Europeans still aren't fans of air conditioning. In a 2021 survey of 1,045 French adults, two out of every three respondents said they had no plans to buy an air conditioner. According to industry estimates, last year, Italy, which saw the highest death toll of 18,000, only 7% of households had air conditioning. In Spain, the second most affected country, it's 11%. In France, which had the highest casualties in 2003, only 5% of homes have AC. Countries like the UK and Germany, which report thousands of heat-related deaths annually, have AC rates of just 5% and 3% respectively. So why don't affluent Europeans buy air conditioners? Several factors come into play. Firstly, there's the weather. It simply isn't usually hot enough for AC. For instance, in Paris, the average high in July is just 77 degrees, so they rarely experience tropical nights. Sure, there are occasional scorchers, but they typically only last a couple of days before things return to the average. Plus, Europe's weather is characterized by low humidity, which means even on hot days, stepping into the shade can feel quite cool. Because of this, it's not uncommon to find restaurants, cafes, and hotels without AC. Even most public transportation like buses and subways don't have air conditioning. And typically, outside of operating rooms, many hospitals lack cooling systems too. The real concern, however, is that this is becoming a thing of the past. With the rise in extreme weather events since 2000, Europe is seeing more and more days that defy the norms. Berlin, which usually has cooler average highs than Paris, suddenly hit a shocking 100.4 degrees last year. The UK's meteorological department now warns that London's chances of experiencing temperatures over 104 degrees have increased tenfold. Secondly, historical context plays a significant role. The modern concept of air conditioning was first introduced in the early 20th century by William Carrier in the US. You might recognize the name Carrier. It's the same name that's on many AC units today, stemming from the company he founded. At the time, the US was rapidly industrializing and urbanizing. Coincidentally, with the invention of AC, it became easy to install them in new buildings and homes. As a result, heat-related mortality in the US dropped by 40%, according to some studies. In contrast, European cities were already filled with centuries-old buildings when AC came into the picture. Installing ACs in these older buildings was much more expensive than in new constructions. And given that there were only a few scorching hot days, AC was seen as a luxury, not a necessity in Europe. In fact, the destruction from World War II presented an opportunity for more modern infrastructure. But Europe simply didn't have the financial means at the time. From then on, air conditioning was viewed as a frivolous luxury in Europe. Currently, over half of European residential buildings were built before the 1970s. This perception of air conditioning as a luxury has certainly played a role in its slow adoption across the continent. The third factor is architectural. Many homes in Europe are characterized by thick walls and high ceilings. While these designs originally focused on keeping out the cold of winter, they also help to cool the interior during hot summer days. Traditionally in Europe, people would let in the cool dawn air and then shut all the doors to trap it inside throughout the day. However, this traditional method proved ineffective during prolonged heat waves, as evidenced in 2003. In France, houses with thick stone walls that usually provided respite during warm summer days heated up, exacerbating the situation. During that time, France alone saw nearly 15,000 heat-related deaths. To make matters worse, it was vacation season, so there was a shortage of staff to manage the situation and families to claim their deceased loved ones. This led to a grim situation where bodies had to be stored in refrigerated warehouses near Paris. Fourth, strict regulations are also inhibiting air conditioning use. In Europe, the older the building, the stricter the regulations for installing air conditioning. If a tenant wants to install an AC unit, they need permission from both the landlord 
and the local authorities. Europe is infamous for its sluggish bureaucracy. Typically, this process takes over six months, by which time, summer is almost over. Even if they get past the landlord, local regulations can be so strict that getting official approval is quite challenging. In most European countries, external units must be positioned at least about 13 feet away from another home's window. But in many of Europe's historic city centers, streets are narrow and buildings are closely packed together, meaning there's virtually no space to install these units. Some countries even have rules against AC units being visible from the street, all in the name of preserving the city's aesthetics. This is practically telling residents not to install AC at all. As a result, most European households that do have AC opt for portable units rather than fixed or system types. Fifth, the cost of electricity is a deterrent to using air conditioning. Electricity is notably expensive in Europe, with prices averaging more than double those in the US. In Germany, it's even pricier, about three times that of the US. With restrictions on Russia's natural gas supply, energy prices in Europe continue to soar. Moreover, during peak usage times, rates increase even further. Understandably, this makes the continuous operation of air conditioning units a significant financial burden for many. Governments across Europe are wary of an increase in air conditioner usage due to concerns about energy shortages. In France, for instance, while heating devices are taxed at 5%, cooling devices are slapped with a 20% tax to curb their use. The reason for Europe's steep electricity costs is the increasing focus on producing energy from cleaner, more environmentally conscious sources like solar and wind, which can be more expensive. The sixth point is the strong environmental consciousness of Europeans. Europeans are at the forefront of efforts to combat climate change, taking substantial steps to reduce carbon footprints and greenhouse gas emissions. Following the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement's goal to limit global temperature rise to 2.7 degrees, there's a move to regulate refrigerants from air conditioners that contribute to global warming. France's National Weather Research Center even released a study showing that if air conditioner usage in Paris doubled, it would result in a temperature rise of over 3.6 degrees in the city. Such studies and related information have solidified the perception among Europeans that air conditioners are environmentally harmful and ultimately more trouble than they're worth. Additionally, Europeans traditionally reduce the need for air conditioning by taking extended vacations during the hottest periods or indulging in siestas. However, with the increasing frequency and duration of heat waves, Europeans are slowly realizing that they have few alternatives to air conditioning. Recent events have underscored the life-threatening nature of extreme heat. But the more they lean on air conditioning to combat this, the faster they approach the dreadful reality of abnormal temperatures. It's a chilling feeling these days, as the vague fear of, is it too late, seems to be materializing. <laughs>